Hello, welcome everyone. Welcome to our webinar series, the webinar series of the Utrecht Laurent University. Today we are going to have a webinar from the Faculty of Informatics, and it is going to be about the master programs, namely about the master in computer science. I am very happy to greet here one of our faculty and also one of our students here. Thank you very much for joining us for this webinar. And I would like to start uh, our information session with a presentation about the faculty itself, uh, so you can have some ideas where the faculty is, uh, where is it located. Um, let me start uh, the presentation that is prepared here. Um, so the faculty of uh, so the faculty of informatics uh, is one of the oldest uh, uh, educational units uh, of Hungary, because the Utrecht Laurent University uh, was established in um, uh, was established in the four, four, I'm sorry. So the Faculty of Informatics is one of the oldest uh, institutions of Hungary. Uh, the university itself was established in 1636. And since that time, it is the oldest and continuously uh, operating university. Our university was funded by Archbishop Peter Pazman and then got the name of the university after the famous physicist Laurent Utfush in 1950. And the university, uh, reorganized itself several times and during the last reorganization the faculty of informatics established uh, we also have very many nobel laureates um, at the university uh, the last novelty that we had this year is that professor laszlo lovas from the faculty of science received a abel prize um, the university is ranked amongst the best both in the national and also in the international rankings. Within the country, we receive approximately one fourth of all the applications. So basically, we are really very famous also within Hungary and also in the international, amongst the international students. Let's have a look at the figures of the faculty. As you can see, what we are really very proud of are the number of international students and the increase within. So we started with not too many international students many years back, but by now, 20% of our student body are international students. This means that the programs, uh, the number of the students at the study programs is increasing rapidly. For example, the ratio of increase at the bachelor level is 66%. But on master level, in the last three years, the number of students increased by 300%. So by now, we have a fair share of 20% of internationals at the campus, which gives a really good international environment. Not only the international student numbers increase, but also the international faculty. We have more and more uh, workers, professors, associate professors, researchers from abroad. Uh, it is very important for our faculty to attract the most international staff as much as possible. Let's have a look at the international corporations of the faculty. Uh, so here you can have a look at the map where Budapest is located within Europe. And you can also have an insight how close it is to all the European destinations and all the other European cities and also capitals. We are really well interlinked with many, many European universities. We operate a CPUS network that was awarded three times by now. We have a really extensive Erasmus Plus cooperation. We have more than 85 Erasmus partners within the Erasmus program. We participate in the European Universities in the initiatives in the CHARM EU consortium. We also have Erasmus Mondos master program running at the faculty. And of course, we also run strategic partnerships with other higher educational institutions. Here, I would also like to highlight the EIT digital consortium, which was also fund, founded by us 
and we are a full member since 2017, and we provide joint master programs as well. The faculty also has a very extensive cooperation with the industry. Uh, we have very many labs, laboratories, uh, as we call. Uh, we have more labs than you can see here on this slide, but we really wanted to highlight the most important labs. Uh, so we have labs with the industry uh, where the students can do their research, their internship, and also their thesis work. I don't have to highlight how important it is to have a real research and internship opportunity on master level uh, education. Uh, just let's have a look at some of the logos, uh, but we have more than 100 partner companies, so we didn't want it to list them all. And why it is very important for us is this knowledge triangle. At the faculty, we truly believe that the education, the research, and the business goes hand in hand, and that the innovation and entrepreneurship is a very important skill, a very important asset that the students can obtain with us. Uh, we, as I mentioned, uh, we are a member of EIT Digital, Digital uh, Consortium, where uh, the innovation and entrepreneurship module uh, was mainly developed, but the faculty also provides innovation and entrepreneurship courses at and for any of the students. So if you are a student at our faculty at any educational level, shall it be bachelor's, master's, or doctorate, we are going to have a program, a course for you on innovation and entrepreneurship. Let's have a look, a short look, uh, into the programs, the degree programs we provide, and especially at the master level. So as you can see, we have the master in computer science and six specializations to it. And we also provide separately a master on autonomous systems and a separate master in cartography. Ana Reale, our next presenter, is going to tell us more details about these programs. That's why I'm going to go further with the general uh, introduction. Uh, we also uh, will have a separate webinar about the joint programs that we provide in these consortia. So you see the link there. Uh, we are a member of two consortia right now. Uh, apart from the bachelor's and the master programs, of course, we have uh, education on doctoral level. We have a doctoral school of informatics, and you can see the main topics that the doctoral school is dealing with. And we also provide summer schools, summer school education. Uh, for example, within the EIT Digital, we are going to have a summer school, of course, this year as well. Uh, and we are going to have an innovation and entrepreneurship training within this summer school. So I would like to encourage you to visit the faculty website, to visit our information channels. I, I'm going to show you uh, shortly and just check what uh, such a summer school uh, can provide you with. Uh, we are very much interlinked, not only in the international sphere, not only with the business partners, but of course it is very important for us to have a very strong cooperation with the society. Uh, we have training labs for elementary school children, and we also have a network where, where we are reaching out to disadvantaged schools. Uh, we try to develop the computational and mathematical thinking uh, of, the, of the youth. Um, it is a very important task uh, to do uh, because research shows that uh, if you really um, make the kids interested in mathematics uh, and basically in STEM education, then you have uh, much better uh, study results. We are also very active in the Bebras Challenge, for example, which is an international challenge, and that attracted 12,000 uh, kids, participants, uh, the previous years. These children are between the age of 12 and 14, approximately. Uh, the faculty also provides a number of services. Um, the university also has uh, services for international students. Here I am only highlighting the ones uh, that are provided by the faculty. We have a student support center, 
uh, which is dealing with learning methodology. Um, there are also courses uh, for the students uh, to develop uh, their learning skills. But the Student Support Center also provides individual counseling, also life co coaching, also crisis intervention. So we have, if I'm not mistaken, at the moment we have five or six uh, psychologists, professional psychologists, who are helping both the Hungarian and the non-Hungarian, the foreign students, um, to deal with life matters. Uh, because uh, studying and sometimes working at the same time is very demanding and it is good to get some help every now and then. Uh, this uh, student support center also provides, for example, the Morning Faces series, uh, which series started at COVID times. Uh, morning Faces, in the morning you can imagine what they look like. And yes, the Morning Faces is about this face. Uh, so they are really bringing the science and the sense uh, and the humor uh, at the same time. Of course, we have a library that we are developing into a community zone uh, more and more. And we also have the Neumann Janos Talent Development Association. Here you can have a look at the links, uh, at the university links, the links of the faculty, the links of one of the programs that we are going to, to uh, introduce you to today. So this is an important slide. And I would like to assure you that all of us, all of the creatures uh, here in Budapest, are really looking forward uh, to your application. This is the end of my presentation, uh, but we are really planning to go into the details. And I would like to give the floor uh, to Anna Reale now. Anna is a former student of ours. She graduated from one of the joint uh, degree programs. And now she is doing an industrial doctorate. Actually, I think she's at the end of her doctoral program uh, because she is already uh, a faculty of official Laurent University. Uh, so she is uh, de delivering uh, classes and various activities for us. So Anna, I'm giving you the floor. And uh, thank you very much. Can you see my screen? No? Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I can see it. I don't see it now, but uh, a second ago, I think I saw it for a minute. OK, so I hope everybody else sees it. And mm -hmm. uh, then I will start supposing that is, that is the case. So, thank you, Martin. As, I, as you were mentioning, I am basically a teaching assistant here at uh, IK. I'm also an Italian PhD student, so I'm also an Erasmus, let's say. I was part of the EIT Digital Master Program, and uh, I then stick up for uh, four years of PhD. So that's how much I liked being here at IK. Um, so um, my role... Yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, we just don't see the the, uh, the presentation. So maybe uh, here we can switch to the. Um, Let me try again. Does it work? Um, can you just step one slide to the to the second slide so we see that it's the second one. Okay, perfect. Sorry for interrupting. Cool. If, if it works, then I go on. It works, it works, yeah. Okay, so why am I here today? You see here, if I manage not to switch too many screens. Well, Martin convinced you, you opened the website of Atavash Laura University Computer Science Master School uh, application ready here, click the button, and um, what then? So where do we go now? There are many, many uh, choices for what concern the program, as you have seen. And I already seen in the chat, many of you were asking about those. I cannot for sure in 10 minutes tell everything about the programs. What I want to give you is a window, an open idea of what we usually have there, mostly focusing on how the student projects are, what are the kind of things that will then help you in your professional life, and this kind of information that probably you won't directly find on the website. So if you're looking for the precise list of the courses and whatnot, that is in the link that Martin provided you. And I sincerely encourage you to have a look at those. But for a more gut feeling, 
I prepared a bunch of picture and very crowded slideshow for you, so I hope you will enjoy. So let's start straight in with what was my specialization as an MSc, and that is software and service architectures. So as you can intuitively get from the name, this is about creating service designer, creating software architect. So this is about making you able not only to design, for instance, microservices and applications, but also the infrastructure that is hosting these microservices and application. So we are talking about things like hey, let's come up with a business use case, like hmm, how the Tesla car is going to provide an infotainment on themselves. OK, what does this imply in the infrastructure level? Well, we will have a bunch of stuff happening at the uh, communication service provider. We would have something else happening on the edge of the network. Something will go to cloud. And then these requirements we will tr translate into concrete solutions. So how will it look like? I will use Azure. I will use blob storage. How will I handle the securities? How will I have maybe the orchestration of all the services? So all of these things are what concerned this kind of um, specialization. For instance, here I put a picture of some work we had with master students on a similar topic. In here we had a uh, train, a Lego train moving around, and we had static cameras that were providing a real time video streams of the train. And the idea was okay, how can we develop the infrastructure so that the videos, images arrive right in time? That if this little stupid penguin crosses the train, then it won't die, it won't be crossed over by the train. Very fascinating specialization. It's my favorite because it's mine, but I am very biased. Let's move on to the next one. The next specialization is data science. I think I don't have to explain to you what data science is. Of course, we are talking about from the business understanding, the data understanding, data preparation, data modeling, evaluation, and deployment of anything that has to do with big data, big chunks of data, so great information systems, complex information systems. Actually, this is um, we are very proud of this specialization because this is something fairly new. In 2016, we had Deutsche Telekom having this uh, data science technology department at Alte. So this is our first real industrial department. We have lots of projects directly with the uh, telco labs. And I put here a couple of examples to give you an idea of what do we do with all this uh, smart services based on big data. So I have on the side here a system for monitoring plant growth. This was one thesis, project thesis of a students of ours. And on this other side, very fascinating, uh, students working with bees. How do we protect beehives? How do we avoid uh, bees from killing each other, from getting aggressive and nervous because there is something wrong in their environment? And how they do it was with a very small microphone, as you can see, smaller than a match. And this microphone would collect uh, the noises produced by the bees, and it will then map them in a 3D spectrogram so that according to the different wavelengths of their noises, they could decide whether they were behaving normally, being aggressive, or even swarming against each other. So you see, um, this is just a few examples, of course, but to give you a hint, an idea, uh, what does it mean to actually use data in in real world scenario? Um, of course, you will see for this um, for this course, you will see many uh, large scale in memory databases, how this kind of distributed processing ecosystem works, how do you work with big stream of data and whatnot that is a given. But this is the result, the applied uh, field. Moving on, the next presentation, which will take probably a while to load, I hope my computer didn't freeze, is about artificial intelligence. And now you see why it's froze, because it's a lot of video here. I won't talk much about artificial intelligence, because we have Bruno with us, which is going to give us a hint about what is happening there in this um, specialization. I just have here a summary of many of the projects that were there at our faculty about tracking the movements of a face or um, just by based on focus points like the eyes and the nose and the distance between the eyebrows. How would we check whether somebody is distracted during a conversation by tracking by via glasses the movement of the eyes? Or how do we 
maybe play video games by moving our eyes or uh, by reproducing movements of the hands. And by uh, that, I also refer to other very fancy experiments we did, which was in tracking all the uh, movement, micro movement of a hand based on this very nice globes you see here. Many, many, many things. I won't spend much, but this is basically machine learning at its deepest levels. Lots of nice projects you can play with. Let me change slide before your computer crashes like together as mine. Let's move to something connected to this. And this something is instead the cybersecurity specialization. So what happened with cybersecurity? What is it this about? Um, this is about applied cryptography, of course. This is about also economics of security and privacy. This is also about how do we handle data access? How do we handle privacy? Many, many things you can guess from the name. If you're interested, I'm sure you know what this is about. But I wanted to put here an example of one of my colleagues. This is Yu Bing Yan. She's a teacher at the cybersecurity and she's also a fellow PhD student. Uh, she's working with GDPR concerns. So how do we anonymize data? This is very important things to do, right? Because there are huge fines you can get if you do not properly anonymize data. But we want to deploy and exploit this data for what we have seen before, right? So for being able to do, for instance, deep learning. So how can we do that? Uh, there are many things you can do. So for instance, she was working with basic anonymization, such as k-anonymity, where you try to, instead of just deleting parts that are related to an, an identifiable person, you would try to somehow create the quasi-identifiers, so some sort of identifier that do not really 100% delete the information from this data, but just anonymize anonymize it anonymize it well and then more complex things for instance how can we use stochastic gradient descent to protect privacy and how actually this can be unsecure for us so this are an example of an image that could be reproduced just by applying um, deep learning techniques many many things happening here as well as in student projects we have collaboration with lots of companies moving on I have here um, what we call financial technology. This is a brand new, I would say, uh, of ours. And uh, this specialization came out from a reflection that there is one field that still is struggling, but right now is really going for it about mm, using machine learning and cryptography and what are the hypes of current digital innovation. And this field is that of financial. And we have lots of new technologies in that. Of course, if you think of, of this, you will think of, um, for sure, Bitcoins and uh, whatnot. So concur currency, digital currency. But here we are also talking about using artificial intelligence and blockchain, blockchain for other financial scenarios. Uh, we are talking about analyzing what giants like Amazon and Apples are doing, what uh, kind of distributed systems we have for digital banking. We give also um, a view of what are the basic financial knowledge you need to have to be able to be a computer scientist in this field. I put here an example, which is very local to Budapest community. I don't know if you are um, aware of what is the Seged festival, but in the Seged festival recently, what they use was this uh, digital bracelet in which they would, people would be able to show their ticket and pay without having cash with them, which is pretty good when you get drunk at a festival. And you could then, you know, recharge everything here and at their top up fast pay uh, stands and whatnot. So it was not only about the technology, but also studying how this could be uh, put in practice during the festival and all the business behind it. I put here also a bunch of um, startups and uh, interesting financial fintech trends of right now. We don't have the time, but uh, if you like, have a look so that you have an idea of what people works on in fintech. Moving on, digital factory. So digital factory program is actually a very hands-on program. Here we are talking about a whole infrastructure that reproduces what we will have in an industry 4.0. 
And in this infrastructure, we have things like uh, CNC machines, we have PLC controlled assembly lines, we have robots. So students in this uh, specialization have the possibility not only to study the basis of computer science, not only to understand how does it works, the life cycle management of a factory and how do you do manufacturing in 4.0, but they have lots of hands-on project in that. Mm, we do have many plant simulation technologies and other things you would be put in contact with in this uh, program. Mm, for instance, uh, you would conduct analysis to detect and discover what kind of data are better for this kind of machines or for other manufacturing systems, not only this ones, but also for medical devices or logistics and whatnot. And of course, there is also here what you have seen in other specializations. So there is a hint at cybersecurity. There is a hint at many other topics that are somehow correlated, as you see here. And computer science for autonomous systems. We had some questions about this one. So I am showing you here two nice videos. These are, I don't know if you've ever been at Elte, but these are from the parking area in between the north and the south building, the south building. And this is on the exit of the garage of the university next to the Danube here. What I'm showing you here is uh, two forward-looking cameras image that has been converted to bird view. And this has been done using two different filters, two different variation of Kalman filter. If you're interested, you can see them up here. This is the Lucas Canide version, and this is the dense optical. So the idea is that you convert this image to something that is top, and you try to make out and understand where the movement is going, where we are going, where, where are the obstacles and whatnot. Very common um, technology, which is used for uh, um, smart car, of course. And it's based on the idea that you have a bunch of inputs, like the ego states so or where am I, where are the other objects, what is the map, and then you can put together all of this information in this uh, elaborated bird view. Very, very interesting. So this is one of the example how artificial intelligence and machine learning are used in the case of um, projects for autonomous systems. This is a real project that our kids did. Um, of course, you won't be only facing the challenges of autonomous vehicles, but in general, the course is about autonomous systems, so development and studies and the software related to that. You will do also software technology. You will have to analyze what are real-time systems. And of course, there will be artificial intelligence involved because why not? And uh, I wanted to mention also that there is the possibility to work with uh, geographic information systems which is a uh, pretty, indeed, interesting topic on its own. I think I went quite quickly here because I was scared of speaking too long or telling you too many things. I hope the presentation in itself was nice enough to have a hint to what is happening concretely as a little project in each of the department. However, please, in the chat, feel free to ask anything that comes to mind. This is just a little teaser for you. And um, I also put some of the contact in the slides for each of these use cases. So maybe you will provide it with a PDF of them, and then you can maybe have a look at what this professor and these students are doing in the field. I think I will stop sharing right now. And probably I would leave the word to Bruno. OK, thank you very much. Thank you, guys. OK, let me just share my screen. OK, um, let me know if my screen is visible. I currently I cannot see you, so if you can see it. Yes, it is. Yeah. OK, thank you. So uh, hello, everyone. I am Bruno Malicio. I'm a computer science master student uh, at ELTE, and I'm studying the artificial intelligence specialization. So I will today talk about a bit of how is living at uh, ELTE as a student. So I'll give you the perspective of a student rather than how to apply. I'll just show you how the whole process of going through the semesters, the subjects, the courses, and all of that. So uh, my journey started in 2019. 
So I had to first uh, apply for ELTE. I had the luck to find a scholarship. So there is also scholarships of opportunities in case you need financial support. And uh, the first day I was at ELTE was in 2019, uh, the first week of September. And it was a very quite memorable day for me because it was my first day as an international student outside my country. And uh, I was really in love with how the faculty looked like. And in fact, I even got lost because it was really big and there's some multiple rooms. So it was a very interesting experience. So then my first semester started around September to December. And in this first semester, you have six compulsory subjects and then one elective in, in this case of artificial intelligence. And these compulsory subjects are subjects that are with, for the curriculum. And then you have electives which you can choose any subject. In my case, I chose business development in which Ms. Anna Reali was my professor, very interesting class. And uh, you also have support in case you have difficulties starting the semester, there are pre-semesters. And I even had a chance to participate in the startup competition. So then in the second semester around February to May, I've had one less subject. So it gave me a bit of more free time. So I had five compulsory and one elective. And in this semester, projects started to come up. So now, just instead of just making midterms, so these are uh, little exams within the semester, I had also some projects in which if we would have good marks, we could even uh, avoid the examination at the end of the semester. Then for the third semester, this was a quite important one as I was introduced, introduced to the internship. And in this case, there are internships opportunities that are offered by ALTE. In our case of artificial intelligence students, we had artificial intelligence lab one and two, which I will talk more about in the next slide. But also I had the possibility to participate in a competition, which, which is called in English scientific student conference. And this is a competition within uh, ALTE uh, that, and our faculty of uh, informatics that allows you to choose a project or a research topic and then present your results in that uh, competition. And luckily, me and my colleague who participated actually won it. And it helped us this semester because we only had four compulsory subjects, so I had a bit of more time. Then in this last semester, which I'm currently on right now, so this is uh, the, from February to May, because of the results uh, me and my colleague achieved in this scientific conference, we had the opportunity to do research at Neural Information Processing Group. So this is an ELTE research group that uh, you can apply for and you can uh, either enroll it through the internship or even uh, without the internship. And also because of our results, we had the opportunity now to participate in the National Scientific Student Conference. So as you can see within ELTE, besides your course, there's numerous opportunities to work on different projects. And also this semester uh, in the first one, fourth one, you'll have the thesis. So now a bit more about the artificial intelligence specialization itself and the internship and research opportunities. So as I mentioned before, the artificial intelligence lab, so this is a laboratory course, it's very practical and the topics are most of the times in partnership with industrial uh, companies. So you have the opportunity to join the company later or you can even get paid. And then there's also research and in, our, in my case, for the artificial intelligence team, we had the neural information processing group. And the topics are various, so I'll point out some of the most important ones. So we have human characterization, and this includes 3D body pose estimation, multimodal deep learning, and also HTPU, which is a very trendy topic. But you can also work on health issues such as skin disease segmentation and classification and also more advanced topics such as human-robot interaction, which includes robotics and natural language processing, and even topics and genetics. So there is many more, hopefully that by now you're already very amazed by Anna's presentation of the examples. So I, I really hope that these topics are within your interests. One of the topics I've been working with recently is the 3D body pose estimation. And one thing about these laboratories and internships at Delta is that they're very uh, they solve real world problems. They are not research or topics that just stay in the laboratory. They're actually problems that you're trying to solve that are applicable in the real world. 
And in our case, in this, this is called the Deep Rehab Project, in which we try to estimate the body pose of people while doing exercises that would help them uh, regain the motion of injuries, in our case, the knee injury. And as you, as you can see here, for example, it's still not perfect, and that's why we need your help, the new students, to join our research and help us with this very exciting topic. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Bruno, for the for the great presentation. Uh, uh, thanks a lot. Uh, and also, thank you very much for the presentation about the specializations, because we really gave us a very quick uh, outlook, a quick summary on these. Uh, we also were preparing with another student, with another student presentation. And here I am turning to Bruno, uh, whether, whether you can continue uh, with the other presentation as well. Uh, yeah, so currently she cannot uh, be present, so I'll just uh, try to share a video she sent me. Um, this is the beauty of the live event, so that's why we are not recording, but thank you very much. Hello everyone, uh, I am Aisha Nyarieva, I am currently studying at LT. So, can you hear the presentation? University, yes, master degree in uh, computer science. My specialization is data science. And when it comes to the timeline that I have gone through, I have experienced from the beginning. Uh, first, on 2018, I was trying to search about the universities and also scholarships. Uh, I was trying to see that uh, which universities are best at uh, in computer science and where I can really learn and where I can uh, get a strict uh, deadlines, strict projects and that I have, I will be able to improve myself more. So on uh, 2000, in 2018, uh, I also contacted my friends uh, who are studying abroad and I asked them about the countries and also about the universities. When I asked uh, about Hungary and the scholarship was that they uh, advised me to apply for was Spendium Angaricum and when it comes to the university, it was definitely ELTE because uh, the my friends that they, are, uh, that they were studying here already and my seniors, they were much more informed about the university and uh, about uh, details when it comes to uh, studying details and the knowledge you can get. So uh, I decided that, yeah, at the university is where I wanna be and where I wanna build my future and, you know, get my uh, degree from and of course, it came, uh, on in 2019, I started uh, studying at ELTE and the first semester, of course, was a bit tough and challenging because till you get to the, you get used to the university and the, um, also the studies and master degree, of course, is much more advanced than bachelor degree. Uh, it took time, but it was successful and I really enjoyed being here. Unfortunately, COVID started and we were only able to be at university for one semester. But that one semester was uh, so enjoyable because the uh, infor Informatica buildings, uh, North building and South, South building, we were having classes in both of them. Uh, those buildings are so beautiful and modern and you can find places to see, to study, sometimes in between classes and breaks, to enjoy with your friends as well. And on 2020, April, I started my internship at Glomobil as IT developer intern. Uh, and also I, I worked for uh, QA engineering as well. Uh, this was an, in, an enjoyable uh, journey because earlier I had experience in my country only, but not in Hungary, not in Europe country. And it was more more interesting because um, in my country we were using English as uh, the second language, but 
the main language was Azerbaijani, but here you're contacting all over the world, your colleagues uh, in English. Of course, this improves your uh, language skills as well. Also your communication skills as well, because you are contacting to people which are all over the world in different places at Exxon. Brazil, uh, even Canada, and different places that we were contacting, and uh, as a team we were working with them. This was quite an enjoyable journey, and uh, it was six months' internship that really added me uh, nice qualities, that I got more certain about my future and my future job, my dream job, that um, QA engineering is also one of them, that I can be um, really good at that. And... When it comes to now 2021, as you know, it's COVID pandemic period. It's a little bit difficult, of course, uh, to deal with and to find job also. That's why I'm still continuing my search. And of course, about the universe, it's my first semester. I'm having some courses and also I am uh, preparing my thesis, which is quite enjoyable because uh, you are working with professors and my uh, choice uh, was related to testing field uh, so i'm working with a uh, testing related professor from university and it is quite enjoyable because um, it's me i am self-studying and i'm asking questions if i have and of course this is much more uh, complicated than normal studies because in thesis you are required to learn many things and bring up new concepts and of course in the end we will have to defend our thesis. And the next slide is about why to choose as the end. Um, what is the reason behind that? that you know why I wanted to study at L10 and uh, why I would advise you also to study. Uh, first thing it would be improvement of self-study and uh, search skills because uh, at ELTE, yes, professors come to the classes and they teach you, but uh, of course in uh, 90 minutes you won't be getting all the information that you are required to learn. That's why you have to learn self-study and uh, you have to be determined about what to learn, about your uh, goals. Second point is, uh, of course, you're going to study in one of the best universities uh, and specifically in the field of computer science. I can say about data science, uh, it's quite difficult and challenging and many new things to learn, many, many professors that who are so strict and serious. Uh, this was also, of course, helpful for you, good for you, because uh, those kind of uh, strict and serious teachers um, you know, require you to learn more and uh, to apply more. So in this condition, of course, you will be improving yourself more and you will be a better version of yourself when you finish the university if you worked quite hard. When it comes to other points, of course, you get chance to know many international people. For example, the other presenter here, Bruno, is, um, was one of my group mates in some classes and um, I got to know him and I got to know many other nice people, uh, international, different countries, and uh, we shared our cultures. We went uh, to nice events together, um, depending on their country, my country as well. And it's quite enjoyable to know and to share your culture with others as well. <clears throat> the next point is, uh, of course, now it's COVID pandemic uh, period, but normally ELTE, uh, has many different nice events uh, that you can join, you can be a part of. And there are different even, uh, uh, let's say, small groups of uh, students uh, or student union you can join and you can be a part of uh, many various events. And that would be also nice for your uh, self-improvement. And other thing, you can become a mentor, and uh, when you become a mentor, you can uh, get the opportunity to help others. And in this condition, of course, uh, being a mentor and helping newcomers would feel good as well, because uh, whenever you came here uh, for the first time, also you were a, a foreigner and you didn't know much. That's why you needed some help, as uh, we also had our mentors and we also became mentors 
after when we become senior. So this would be one of the best and interesting thing also to try if you would like to. So thank you for your attention. This was all about uh, my presentation. I hope you enjoyed it. Bruno, thank you very much for helping us out. Uh, Aishan is here with us, uh, with the participants. We had a little technical difficulty. So thank you very much, Aishan, for this great video and the great presentation. And thank you very much, Bruno, for assisting us with showing it. Um, and now we will uh, skip to the last presentation about the application, how to apply, uh, how to submit an application to our uh, master programs. Uh, let me just uh, find my presentation and uh, uh, we will go from there. Uh, can you see the presentation that I'm showing? Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so as you could see, uh, the uh, programs that we have uh, are, are, we call them specializations, but you have to submit your application to individually. Uh, if you would like to apply for more programs, more sub, uh, specializations, then you have to submit more applications. I'm going to show you in a, in a second how. Uh, so we showed eight uh, separate master programs to say so. Uh, there are uh, seven programs in one uh, uh, accreditation and one program with another accreditation, but the application is completely separate. Uh, the application process, uh, you have to submit your application by the application deadline, which is 30th of April this year. Uh, so there is still a month to apply. Uh, then there is a one, two month period when your application material is being reviewed. And then you are going within, you are going to have a Skype interview at approximately a 20 minute Skype interview. Uh, the evaluation process involves both written and also oral parts. So where you see the test, test, uh, there you have to also make an entry test. And then upon the successful application, uh, we are going to notify the applicants, the students, the prospective students, uh, at the in the middle of June, uh, beginning of July, so we can all start uh, the travel arrangements uh, and the visa applications. Uh, currently, we are really preparing for the next year, uh, so we are really uh, hoping that we are going to have uh, good news uh, for all the applicants. So uh, the application deadline is 30th of April, then one or two months of evaluation and entry test. And then uh, if you get a positive answer, then you start the then we start the travel arrangements. It is very important that you only need to pay the application fee if your application is successful. So you are not charged for unsuccessful applications. In Hungary, the school year at all schools, in all educational level, the school year and the academic year start in September, uh, usually 1st of September or the very beginning of September. So uh, you're supposed to be ready uh, for the studies in September. What is also very important that once you enroll, uh, you have to fill in another test. And it is very important that the results of the two tests have to be similar or the second test uh, cannot be worse. Uh, so if the second test is not good enough, then we may offer you either to start uh, your studies at the foundation year or we would not be uh, studying. So it is very important that we are checking uh, uh, the quality, uh, the test quality uh, several times uh, before uh, you would become a student. On the other hand, it is good news that if the test is not that bright as it was in the spring, then you will be offered to start the studies on the foundation year. Um, the website of the study programs looks like this. So we, al we have all the study programs at the university's website. We are going to have all the links at the end of this presentation. And here I wanted to show you some parts of this website. So there is a 
program information. There is a structure of the program. If you're interested about the courses, the syllabus, exactly what are you going to study in each of the semester, then you can pick the structure. Uh, you can also read about the career opportunities, what kind of uh, uh, job you can find uh, with the uh, degree that you would receive from us. And there is also, of course, the admissions part, uh, which is co uh, collecting all the information that is needed to submit a successful application. Within the uh, programs uh, that we showed, um, we have uh, we can accept different types of uh, bachelor degrees. Uh, the most commonly, or we can accept. Uh, bachelor degree in computer science to all of our master programs but there are some master programs that could accept other degrees as well for example the digital factory specialization also accepts students from mechanical engineering and the financial technology specialization also accepts students from various fields of studies of course, it is very important that you did some mathematical and computer science uh, studies within your bachelor's, uh, but there are some programs that can receive more uh, bachelor degrees than the other ones. The best is if you have a computer science degree, a bachelor, but, but we can be uh, sometimes flexible. We have to look into the degree into the transcript of records when you apply. When you're applying, you will need the following documents. So you will need the filled in application form. Uh, this is an online application form. We are going to have a very detailed look in a second. So you have to start filling in and you have to submit uh, an application form. You have to attach to this online application form. So you have to upload at, into the online surface, the secondary school uh, finishing documents, the bachelor level degree, so the degree itself, also the transcript of records of all the semesters that you completed. You have to uh, prove, uh, upload a proof of English proficiency uh, with a B2 level. This can be, for example, a language certificate. This can be a certificate from the higher educational institution that your program, your bachelor's were uh, happening in English. And also you can upload any documents about any further education, any kind of certificate. It is really important that the application committee really can have the best information about you and the most information that you can deliver about yourself. As you could see, these master programs, these specializations are really very um, detailed and they are really helping to harvest various types of, uh, of the computer science. So that's why it would be very important, very nice if you could upload uh, all the relevant educational inf information as well. Uh, we will need also a CV about you, about your educational background, about your work experience, but we need your CV. We need your motivational letter. Um, usually we, we are reading the, uh, the general motivational letters uh, that are approximately one or maximum two pages long, so we don't have to write five or 10 pages. But in this one page or one and a half page motivational letter, you really have to describe your objectives. Why do you apply to this program? What made you interested in this program and what kind of background you have? Uh, what would you gain if you, if you graduated from, from, this, uh, from such a uh, master program? Um, you also have to upload the main pages uh, of your passport. You will have to upload separately a passport picture, a passport size picture. In a minute, I'm going to show you where. And also, we will need a medical certificate uh, that you are uh, mentally and physically, physically fit for the higher education. What is very important that we will need uh, translations of all the documents if they are not in English or Hungarian. So if they are not in English or Hungarian, you will have to go and make official translations of them. 
What is also important that during the application, you, we only need electronic documents that you are uploading into this application uh, portal. So please do not post any of your documents to our offices. We are not working with, with the paper documents through, uh, during the application. But uh, before the enrollment, we must see all the documents and all the originals of the documents. So when we are making the enrollment in September, let's, uh, uh, let's hope that we will have a, a, a physical year in September, then you will have to bring all the documents with yourself uh, to show us at the administration's office that the, these documents really exist and they, they are valid. Let's see the application portal. Let's start with the application portal now. So if you go on our website, you will find an apply now button that you can also see here now in this webinar. Uh, so basically, if you follow the link, then you can then you will jump there. And it is a really easy application system. Uh, so you have to click apply now to start an application. And if you do not have an account, then first you will have to make an account. It is an easy thing, a very general thing. You can also use your Facebook, Google, or, or uh, LinkedIn data. Uh, what is really important that you, uh, that the email address you provide here is going to be used throughout the whole process. So please provide us with the email address that you are checking frequently. Uh, because let's say that if you wouldn't upload uh, um, a transcript of records well, then we are going to contact you at this email address. So please provide us with, with the email address that you check frequently. Uh, you will have to verify this email address, uh, but basically it is really just clicking and uh, clicking next and next and next. Uh, the screen that you can see here is the first screen in the application portal. Um, here you cannot change your name and you cannot change your email address because you provided it already. Uh, it is asking for a phone number first and then you can continue. Um, later on, you are able to select uh, from the programs. Uh, so that's what the application portal looks like. If you look on the, on the left side menu, then you can see various uh, points uh, in this application form. It starts with the profile, um, then priorities and so on. So at the priorities part, uh, you can put what program you apply to. Uh, this is the main part when, when you are selecting whether you're applying for cybersecurity spe specialization or data science or digital factor specialization. If you would like to apply for more programs at the same time, then you have this button here, and then you can add from a list more and more and more uh, programs and specializations. Um, so if you would like to uh, try your chances, uh, just go ahead. Uh, and uh, we will evaluate uh, these applications. Um, the first part uh, with the longer part that you will have to fill in is the name, the passport number, issue date, nationality. So basically you have to fill in the profile. Um, we are working from this database uh, throughout the application process. Uh, so it is very important that you are providing us with the uh, accurate data. Uh, so it is the profile is the part where you are uploading all the personal information. And then at the bottom of the page, uh, there is a part where you have to you must upload a picture, a, a passport size picture of yourself. And it is very important that you upload the picture here because that's what makes your application valid. Uh, so yes, you are also, uh, you also have to attach as a document uh, your passport, but here you have to separately upload a JPEG uh, image uh, that is uh, smaller than two megabytes. So this is important uh, because it is a, a formal uh, necessity. 
When we go to the contacts part, uh, we will be asking about your contact information. Uh, what is very important is that we have an emergency contact, a place for emergency contact as well. And this emergency contact should be a person that you trust the most. Um, we are going to contact, so this emergency contact would be contacted if something happened, uh, if we would lose the track, if we cannot contact you here while you're in Hungary, if, if something happened. So this is really important that someone from, from your surrounding uh, is there uh, that we can reach out to. Uh, for this emergency contact, uh, we cannot accept any uh, other person, so we cannot put a university administrative worker, for example, because then it wouldn't be really a contact to you or to your family or to your friends. Uh, also see, this is the, the uh, final last part of the emergency contact, so you can also type in various types of uh, information, whatever uh, you would like to provide for us. Education is important because this is the part where you can add your previous studies, uh, previous educational part. Basically, each, each education section has its own uh, uh, little chart, and you can add as many little charts as, as you wish. Uh, so you have to fill in the education part here. You have to type in the data, and you'll have to upload all the documents at the documents part later on, I'm going to show. So this is the education, then the languages. First, you will have to pick your national native language, and then you can select from the foreign languages that you speak. Activities, this is really up to you. So if you have a lot of activities, if you won already uh, many, many contests, if you are running a company or an NGO, then here is the place to, to indicate it. Residencies is about international experience. So if you ever studied abroad or you would like to share with us uh, your study abroad experiences, then you can upload them here. And that's what the table looks like. And here is the documents part. And basically all the, all the, all the documents have to be uploaded here. As you can see, one file can be maximum four megabytes uh, large and the application form uh, accepts JPEG, GIF, PNG, and PDFs only. So you will not be able to upload other types of uh, files or, or larger files than, than uh, the capacity given. Motivation, there are several ways to send us your motivation letter. Either you can upload it to the documents part as a separate file, as a PDF file, for example, or you can type it in here. It is really up to you which one you pick. Maybe uh, attaching a motivation letter to the documents part is easier because then you see uh, your whole application folder all in one uh, on one place. Other, um, these are really other information that you would like to share with us. Uh, there are also parts where you can also give us a link uh, where you can upload other information. Um, what is really important for us is to learn about this uh, information flow and to know where did you hear uh, about us. Uh, it is rather important uh, so we can have uh, more and more uh, international students joining us. Um, this is the last part of the application. So here is the funding part where you can pick whether you applied for any kind of scholarship or not. And you can see the submit your application button at the bottom of the page. So basically after filling in this form and after uploading all the necessary, all the necessary information, uh, you will have a checklist. Uh, so with this checklist, uh, you will see which documents are uploaded and which are missing, which are the documents that we asked another copy or a fresher copy or maybe a little more information. So basically this uh, checklist is helping us to keep the track where we are in this application process. Thank you very much for your, uh, for your attention. Um, here, if you check, if you scan this QR code, 
and then it is going to direct you to the uh, Facebook page of the faculty. The university also runs a Facebook page. So once you type in ELTE, ELTE, in Facebook, in LinkedIn, or, or in Google, you'll see how large our institution is. Uh, so these are the most important uh, contact information and also the most important websites during your application. But if there was anything, just write us either via Facebook or just send me an email. Uh, we were sharing most of our contacts with you here. So once again, uh, thank you very much for your attention. We are really looking forward to receiving your application uh, this year, uh, so we can start the next at the academic year together. Uh, here on this uh, on these pictures, you can see some of the robots, some of the technology, uh, some of the student ambassadors, uh, some of the students who are waving to us in the shape of IK, Informatics, Faculty of Informatics in Hungarian. And in the middle, you can see a fragment of our building, uh, and this is not all of our uh, uh, faculty or teaching staff, uh, but you can see some of the uh, some of the uh, educational stuff as well. So, um, I am looking also into the chat. Uh, we are collecting uh, all the questions, so please, if you made a question but you we didn't reply to it yet. Don't worry, because we are going to send emails uh, later on. Uh, and this uh, webinar uh, will be uh, available as a recording. Um, so I'm just looking into the chat whether, uh, whether, uh, whether there is any very urgent question there, but I don't see any. Um, and I think for the uh, farewell part, for the uh, goodbye part, I'm going to turn off the presentation and I'm just going to turn the presenters here. And I would like to thank you very much, Anna. Thank you very much, Bruno. And also Aishan for From Far Away. Thank you very much for all the very interesting presentations and this great webinar. And I'd like to say goodbye. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.